First of all, when we look at the graph of sine, you probably already learned how to graph this in a previous lesson, but the key thing that we want to pay attention to here is that, you know, although the sine is a, a function, see it passes the vertical line test, the inverse of this graph is not a function. You can see that it's failing the horizontal line test, meaning that when you draw a horizontal line, you know, it's crossing the graph at more than one point. So what mathematicians decided to do to you know, get around the fact that it's not a function is just to restrict the domain. So when you restrict the domain, what we're doing is we're just going to look at it from here to here. So we're just going to look at this part of the graph. Okay, I'll just make it a little bit darker so you can see it. Because now you can see it passes the vertical line test. This is a function. It passes the horizontal line test. Okay, meaning it doesn't cross it more than once. So the inverse of this graph is a function. So now how do we actually graph the inverse? Well, what you can do when you graph the inverse function is you switch the x and the y coordinates. You're switching the input and the output. So let's look at uh, three key points here. Let's look at this point here, negative pi over two, comma negative one. And what we're gonna do here is, uh, we're just gonna write this out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch the x and the y coordinates. So if we do that, this is gonna be negative one, negative pi over two. Now remember, pi is 3.14 approximately, divided by two is about 1.57. So this point is really gonna be negative one, negative 1.57, okay? So if we graph this, negative pi over two, this is like negative 1.57. So we're negative a one is gonna be right about there, okay, about two thirds of the way. And then we're gonna go down negative 1.57. It's gonna be right about there, okay? So you're with me so far? Now the point here where it goes to the origin, that of course is zero, zero. And when you interchange the X and the Y coordinates there, it's just the same exact point. Okay, so we're gonna be right there. And then this other point, pi over two comma one, okay, let's mark that one down, pi over two comma one. If we switch the X and the Y, we get one comma pi over two. And again, pi over two, remember, is about 1.57, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph that point. So one is gonna be right about here. Okay, this is 1.57, so this is about two thirds of the way. Okay, and then we're gonna go up 1.57, which is right about there. Okay, now when we graph this, the graph's gonna look like, uh, let's see, like this. Now one thing that you'll notice when you graph the inverse function, it's gonna be a reflection over the line y equals x. So it's a line that has a slope of one, it's like a 45 degree line, and it's gonna be a reflection, okay, over that, over that line. So that's all you have to do if you forget how to graph the arc sine or the sine inverse function, go ahead and graph the original graph, restrict the domain from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, and then switch the x and the y coordinates on these three key points, and that'll be a quick way to get the graph. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.